What, what do you have here? What are you well, studying? Well, this here? actually is not a bone. These are fragments of a triceratops horn. Okay. Uh, in 2012, the Creation Research Society sponsored Mark Armitage and I to go to the Hell Creek Formation in Montana, which is a very popular place for finding dinosaur bones. And we instead dug out a triceratops brow horn. Now, it's just in crumbled pieces now, so we can't really, you know, put it together and show you a horn. And what we've done, of course, is have to work with it where you actually destroy portions of it. But you have to recognize that inside that rock-looking structure are tissue, cells, and protein still there. All right, so let, let's go back for a second because um, if, if this uh, horn or uh, part of a dinosaur had been buried for millions and millions of years, you would not expect to still be able to see tissue, but are you saying that's what we're finding? That is absolutely what we're finding. In fact, in a Nature Communication paper in 2015, they referred to it as common. Hmm. So is this, uh, is this unusual for those who have followed uh, the traditional paradigm associated with when dinosaurs lived and when they died? It would certainly be not at the least expected. In fact, Mary Schweitzer, who was the first one to really make this popularized, was the first one to really get discoveries that were noticed by a wide range of scientists, she comments in interviews that she had her technicians repeat the study over and over and over again simply because it's so difficult to understand how you could have this material still in a dinosaur fossil that is supposed to be 65, 70, 75, 80 million years of age. Because any competent biochemist knows that tissue, cells, proteins break down. They don't just, they're not concrete. They don't just exist for eons of time. They break down. And in fact, they tend to break down fairly quickly depending upon the conditions. And certainly in Hell Creek, the conditions would be warm up, cool down, warm up, cool down. We found this horn, for example, just a mere one foot below the surface. Now it was in very solid sandstone, so we had to chisel it out, but it was just below the surface. So there was no thermal protection by being deep in the ground. So it would have been very much subjected to fluctuations of hot and cold and hot and cold. And any biochemist can tell you that is the fastest way to destroy material. It's difficult enough to envision it surviving for four or 5,000 years, but 60 million years, 70 million years, see that really becomes very difficult to make any kind of biochemical basis for how it could have survived. Here we have a piece of the horn that has been decalcified, like what I just showed you over on the bench. Mark Armitage was our microscopist working on this, and Mark then took a piece of the decalcified horn and put it under a microscope. See the fibrous material there? That's part of the composition of the bone matrix itself. But what's really of interest is see the white material here on the surface swaying back and forth? That, that's actual dinosaur tissue on the surface. See, this is not a solid fossil. This has got tissue characteristic to it. See, notice how it flexes back. And that's, of course, very interesting how you pull on it, flexes back, pull on it, flexes back. That's characteristic of tissue. That's what tissue would do. Now, Mark then was able to extract some very thin layers of elastic material away from the inner core of the horn, but he didn't have to decalcify the horn in order to do this. You can see it's stretchy, it's flexible. In fact, look, notice, see how it's stretching? It's stretching almost to twice its original size of what it was. See, this again is original dinosaur tissue that he's peeled directly from the fossil. There was no decalcification that he did first. See, this is how accessible this tissue was. He didn't have to remove any fossilized bone to get to this tissue. Okay, now, here is a light microscope picture of the tissue itself. You can see the texture of it. And in fact, see, notice the arrows, they're pointing to cells. These cells specifically are what we call osteocytes. 
Those are bone cells. They're involved in making bone because even though we think a bone is a rock, bone is tissue. Bone is not a rock. Mm -hmm. In fact, in our bodies, bone is replaced about every 10 years to keep it all fresh and the new matrix laid down and such. So it, it's constantly being changed and that's what those cells do. And if you look at them then at a closer magnification, well, we see then this is using scanning electron microscopy. You see the extreme detail of the cells. See how well that's preserved. It I is. mean, that doesn't speak for something that has been degrading or something that has just been in a non-pristine condition mm -hmm. for 65, yes. 70 million years. Mm -hmm we would not expect, begin to expect to see such enormous and elaborate detail. I mean, these structures are incredibly small. You know, this is our 20 micron bar here. See how small these structures are, still intact. And yet, see that kind of detail, then obviously the preservation process is surprising really to everybody. Yeah. But I think as, as creationists, we have a lot less to explain than someone trying to suggest that this is, you know, 65, 70 million years of age.